Alright, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're watching this, you are listening to Dumb Things I'm Forced to Deal With. It's me, your host, Luis Swagu. What is up? This is episode 3. Today is currently January 12th. It's 7.42pm when I'm recording this here at Central Time. And, uh, how you doing? Just go ahead and ask yourself today, how are you doing? Because you get to decide how you feel today. Just get you a little daily dose of inspiration in. Now, um, I guess what I'm going to, if you notice, I'm alone again today. Uh, no Gavin, no anybody. I'm going to try and get more guests in the future because I think it's more interesting like that. But if you're still listening, go ahead, pat yourself on the back. You're a loyal listener to the Louis Swaggo channel. Please enjoy. And I wanted to, uh, I wanted to say that I just finished my most recent album that I've been working on for about six months. And I submitted it to TuneCore, so it will be on most of your mainstream platforms, should it go through, which hopefully it will. But, um, yeah, there's that, and I'm now done with that, which is great. I'm absolutely ecstatic that I'm done, and I get to move on to greater things. And I would be recording right now, but instead, I'm here recording this podcast, because I'm done with everything. Which is great, it's absolutely splendid. Um, <laughs> splendid. But uh, I, I really do like making these podcasts. I really do just like sitting down and talking and people listening to what I have to say. But uh, yeah, there's that. So I guess what I'm going to start with is um, what I kind of wanted to get into today was class presentations. Because I think that is absolutely hilarious and a great topic to go from. So I'm going to start with a story. Um, shoot, where'd it go? Uh, I think it was eighth grade. I was in my world history class. And we had a debate presentation, sort of. It was a debate. And the, um, the argue, I love arguing, by the way. Gosh, if my school had a debate team, I would be on that quick, so fast. I would be there. I would be right at the sign-up sheet saying, where do I sign? I put my name here. And then I would go in there. And I would absolutely slaughter everyone in an argument. Because I would point out all of the rhetorical fallacies they make. Because I was taught well. But, uh, okay, in this presentation in world history, it was about Athens versus Sparta. Shout out to people who were in my 8th grade class listening to this, because they probably remember this. But, um, there wasn't anything too crazy about it. It was, uh, I lost the argument, by the way, which I was furious about. I didn't want to speak for weeks, because, uh, I was on Sparta's side, okay? And, uh, I know there was, like, some kind of, I think there was a war between Athens and Sparta, and Athens won because they were, like, the smart people, and Sparta was all the brute force military and junk. And I guess they beat Sparta by being smarter than them. Uh, <laughs> but I was on Sparta's side. Everyone knew how much I love to argue. So they picked me to be the main opener for the argument. And so I'm up there. I've got all these bullet points and junk. And the bad thing about me when I argue, my face gets so red. And I get, I get into it. Like, I think, I, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But like... I, I get into it. I really do. I, I lay down the heat in these arguments. Now, uh, I ended up losing, which kind of sucked, but, uh, I was, I was really going at it, and then they, they'd corner me in a few spots, because obviously, Athens is the better pick. We were assigned these, uh, these viewpoints, because I would have most definitely picked Athens, but nope, got stuck with Sparta, because, you know, Athens, they have the proof. They won. They're better. And we were basically just arguing who was better. And, um, they would point out how we threw babies off cliffs, and I would point out how they needed our help in other wars, and then they would say, well, we beat you. And I'd be like, yeah, true. Guess I'm done. So, uh, yeah, I lost, and it was embarrassing for my pride, because I really thought I did a good job, regardless, especially since I was defending the losing side. And, uh, where was I going with this? I, I basically just wanted to point out how terrible class presentations are. Now, regardless of that story, every time that you have a class presentation, something is subject to go wrong. Now, the worst part is when you have, I'm gonna start with group presentations, because group presentations are the absolute worst. Oh my gosh, I can't even stand them. Now, in every group where you're gonna have to give a presentation or anything, there's like three subcategories. There's the one who does all the work, there, <laughs> yes, and that was me most of the time. There's the one that does all the work. That's me. 
All right, every project, I'm going to take charge. I'm going to basically be doing everything because if you want something done right, you do it yourself. That's how you do things, all right? So, and there's the person who doesn't do anything until five minutes from when it's due. And all of a sudden, they start caring about their grade. And <laughs> you, 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 got a, you got a picture in your head, don't you? Just go ahead. You're thinking of it. You're thinking about this uh, person who doesn't care until it's about to be taken up. And you're like, oh, shoot. Hey, what are we doing for this, guys? And they're like, oh, uh, you know, I, the person who does everything's like, well, where were you? you? You didn't do any of this information. He's like, no, nah, no, nah, but I'm in it now. And by then, you don't even care. And then there's always like one or two people in the group who just conversate with each other the whole time. I say one or two, you can't talk to yourself unless you're me right now. But uh, it's like two people, two or three people, and they just chat amongst themselves the entire time while the one person is doing all the work. And sometimes they'll throw in like an input, and that'll be it. And that's basically how every group presentation goes down. You go, and then like five minutes before you go up to the board, they're all asking, all right, what am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to say? And I'm like, you're doing these slides, I'm doing these slides. And then, of course, there's the projects where the teacher's like, you can't read directly off the board. You have to talk amongst, like, by yourself. You can't just read information off the board. And then they're like, oh. And then they start BSing the whole thing because they don't know what the heck we're talking about because they didn't pay attention the entire time. And the one kid who does everything is the only one who knows what's going on. That doesn't make any sense to me. Like, if you wanted a good grade, you should have paid attention the entire time, right? <sighs> And then, like, I, I'm, I'm a good speaker, okay? Like, that's just one of the talents I possess. I'm not getting cocky or anything. I just think that I'm, compared to everyone, a lot of other people, I don't want to say everyone else, because there's better speakers than me, most definitely. But I'd say compared to a lot of classmates I have, I'm a good speaker. Now, what I've noticed a lot of people is they'll be giving presentations, and once they're talking on the board, they'll freeze up, forget everything they were talking about. They'll get red in the face, and they'll just sit there, because they don't know what to say. They've drawn a blank, and they have no idea what they're doing anymore. It's like they went to a parallel universe and came back at the snap of someone's fingers, and they just they have no clue what to do. They're just sitting there, and they have no idea what to say. It's like <laughs> it's like they traveled through time and came back or something. Like a million years have passed between that one fraction of a second, and suddenly they don't know where they are anymore. They're on a different planet. They're, they're on the Death Star, now they're back, they've traveled the universe and came back, it's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> I, I, got, I got an image in my head, I hope, I hope you do too. It's probably happened to you, I think it's happened to me before, I want to say it has, I've just frozen up and I don't know what I'm saying anymore, you just lose all track, you look at your bullet points and suddenly you're just drawing a blank, you have no clue what to do anymore. That's the worst, that's one thing I hate about class presentations. But, uh, oh, then there's the embarrassing things that happen during class presentations, like, oh, I forgot where I was going with that. In eighth grade, okay, back at that presentation I talked about at the beginning of the podcast, it was Athens versus Sparta, and I talked about Sparta's government and how it was an oligarchy, which means it has multiple rulers, and I don't know why I said it, but instead of oligarchy, I said oligarchy, and everyone... The whole class just erupted in laughter, and I was, I don't know why, he said, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but everyone made fun of me for it. It was like an ongoing, recurring joke for the next year and a half, and I despised it. It eventually phased out, but now that I've re-mentioned it, I'll probably go back to school tomorrow, and everyone will be like, hey, how's that oligarchy going? And I'll be like, ha ha ha, you're hilarious. What, do you want a medal for the world's funniest joke? Because cause obviously you deserve it. Actually, since you're such a comedian, why don't you go up to the front of the class and just tell jokes for the rest of the class? They'd probably be like, oh yeah, as long as we don't have to do a lesson. And then they get up there and they tell corny jokes and, and no one would laugh. And then it would be really awkward for the next hour of class. And no one would know what to do. And the teacher would refuse to teach because she's trying to make a point that the class clown is such, so, such a comedian. Yeah, I guess we got a comedian in our class. <laughs> I guess we have a comedian on our hands class. Yeah. Go ahead. Tell some more jokes. They're hilarious. Just keep going. And then I'm, I'm sitting in the corner just shaking my head agreeing with the teacher. Like, yeah, tell them, teach. They're dumb. Yeah, go ahead. Take another joke. And, and then the teacher would be like, shut up, oligarchy. And then I'd just sit there. And then the whole class would laugh again. And then the kid would think it was his joke. And he served his purpose by making the class laugh. You ever just think about hypothetical situations like that? Just like making a whole story in your head. 
it's kind of crazy what the human mind can do, honestly. Like, I don't know if y'all, any of y'all have seen the movie Lucy, because I haven't seen it either, but I, <laughs> but I know what it was about, kind of, sort of. It's basically like the brain power of the human mind can accomplish some crazy feats if we used our entire mental capacity, which I'm not sure if any of that's factual or not. I don't know if humans use 10% of their brain power or not. I mean, that sounds like a logical statistic, but they say that, uh, 67% of statistics are actually false, including that one. You get the joke. I'm just like the corny class limit comedian now. <laughs> but, uh, seriously, the things that the brain do, do are crazy. Like, I read something the other day that the world's fastest supercomputer would take 40 minutes to comprehend what your brain does in a singular second. It's kind of crazy, like, the split decisions that your brain can make. Like, you really think about it. Human minds are, like, super complex. Like, you think about animals. Animals can't even speak English. They All they do is, and they make, like, like dolphins. Dolphins, they say they're super smart. Why can't they speak English? Yeah, but they feel real dumb now. Shout out all my dolphins for, you know, speaking Dolphinese and not English. We don't need to hear what you're saying. You're probably plotting an overthrow against hum the human race because... <laughs> Because they're so much smarter than us. They've already evaluated to make all of our nuclear weapons target each other. And then it'll be the death of humans. And all the dolphins will just be hanging out underwater where they're safe. They'll just hold their breath for a few 20, 10, 20 minutes while nuclear annihilation is happening above the surface. And then it will be the age of dolphins. And they will bask in their glory. You see, look, I just made a whole other situation just right there. I, I just described the human versus dolphins war. What would we call that for? The, um... Shoot. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've lost my train of thought. You see him freezing up again. Just like I did in class. Just like everyone does in class. You gotta connect the topic somehow, right? Where was I going? Oh yeah, brain power. Brain power. The human mind is, like, crazy. Like, I'm trying to think of a particular instinct, instance. Like, how about baseball? Baseball's crazy. You could, uh... There's people throwing 100 miles per hour fastballs and the hitter has to make a split decision in like less than 0.1 of a second if they want to swing or not. Like that's just crazy to me that your brain can fathom how fa with how fast that ball is coming towards you. That your brain can fathom and make a decision just like that. Like, that's fast. Like, you, th you think about that, like, if a supercomputer did that, they wouldn't be able to. Like... The ball would fly right past them. That's why we can't have computerized baseball. Robots can't play baseball because they couldn't make a decision. They either swing every time or just wait every time. And that's that's exactly how it would be. Unless, of course, we advanced our technology, which I'm sure we'll do within the next hundred years. That's crazy to me. Oh, yeah. I remember where I wanted to go. Like, I said next hundred years there, right? That kind of reminds me of population. And I don't know why I want to touch on population, but I'm leaving the human mind for now. But, uh, I was in history class the other day, and my goaded history teacher, he, uh, he put a statistic on the board, and it was about the population boom over the last few hundred years. No, it took, like, it took humans several million years to reach the first billion population. And then the next one came in, like, 200 years. We hit 2 billion. And then after 100 years, we hit 3 billion. And then, and, like... 30 years, we hit 4 billion, and then 5 and 6 came in like 12 years, and I don't know where we're at now. It's probably like 3 years, we hit 7 billion or something. I don't know, but I think that's just, that's just crazy. You can fact check me on that. I'm sure I misspoke somewhere in there, but um, that's crazy to me how fast the population is so much. Uh, it's exponentially increasing like that. Like, that's crazy to me how, I guess it is simple math, though, like in... You know, the, the whole reason he put that on the board was, the board was like, uh, war contributes to that. Because, you know, all the soldiers go off to war, and they come back, and that's when the baby boomers come around. Because they come back, and they all have kids right after they're deployed, because they've been away forever. And they come back, and they have kids. And that's how the population increases. So, where was I going with this? Not to be political or anything, but like... The population boom is a really scary thing, to me at least. Like, I can't imagine the population doubling in size over the next 30 or 40 years, which it probably will. It'll probably be at 14 billion by 2050, honestly. I, I just think about that. 
And like that's that's so crazy to me how the population booms like that. It just keeps exponentially increasing. It's like a vertical. It's gonna be like a vertical line pretty soon. And you put it over, you know, x and y axis, y axis being population, x axis being time. That's crazy. You probably didn't want a math lesson, but you were here. Learned about graphs, I'm sure. Some of you are on your way to school listening to this, probably. If that's you, shout out you. Probably on your way to your math lesson right now. Dude, I can't, I can't stand math. Math class gets on my nerves. Like, I admit there's like a lot of stuff that you need to know for basic everyday life. Like, most of that's like probability and f math, finance, stuff like that. That's stuff that you need to know. That's beneficial to you. But like... I could go on a poll and ask several adults right now when the last time they used the Pythagorean theorem was, and they'd say college or high school. No, no one uses the Pythagorean theorem in their everyday life, and teachers will be like, "Oh, but oh, what if you want to calculate the the uh, square, the, the surface area of your garden, and it's a triangle, and you need to figure out how long the hypotenuse of your triangular garden is." First off, when am I gonna have a triangular garden? Okay, go ahead and put that around you. And if even if you did, I mean, if you were into, you know, putting triangles all over your garden, which I can't see why you would make your garden triangular. But hey, maybe there's some kind of study that me, me, makes uh, sense of it. Where like, oh, if you have a triangular garden, it, it grows better. Okay, say that, say that just were to happen. Now, I don't understand how the Pythagorean theorem... Why, like, why do I need to know that? If... Why don't I need to know the surface area of my garden, all right? What if you just wanted to know? I, I, if I wanted to know, then I'd Google it. I'd Google what the Pythagorean theorem was, and I'm sure there's an online calculator which I can just enter it to. People don't account for how much smartphones have changed society today. They really don't. And that is, that is absolutely insane to me. It's absolutely bonkers. Now, just to touch on something, I, I, before I go into smartphones, which is what I was about to go into... I just want to touch on math. Oh my god, what was I thinking? Dude, I'm drawing a blank again, just like I talked about earlier. This happens sometimes. Oh, shoot. Where was I going? Forgive me. Apologies if you're still listening. Come on, Grant. Stop drawing a blank. Think. Math. I was talking about smartphones. I might go back and cut this out because this is this is embarrassing. I'm sorry. Hold on. Maybe I'll take a sip of my drink and maybe I'll think of it. Okay, so they didn't account for how useful smartphones were going to be. And they taught all this stuff. Like, oh yes, I remember, I remember now. Okay, sorry, apologies. But, um, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. Oh yeah. So, I'd say, like, all math is super useful up to, like, Algebra 1. Everything past that seems super duper unnecessary to me. Like, my, even some of the stuff you learn in Algebra 1, like, it's, it's unuseful. Unless, of course, you're going to be, you're going into a math-related profession where you're going to need that stuff. Now, I understand you need it for college, but, like, the same principle applies. If you're not going to need it for your, your, uh, your occupation, then what's the point in learning it? So you can be as intellectually superior as everyone else. Who cares? It's not your field. You don't have. You shouldn't have to learn it. Okay. So I feel like there's some countries that do this. I don't remember which one they were. I read a study on it, but like it might be like Sweden or Finland because they're like super advanced on education. But like you can pick a major in high school, and you'll learn things that pertain to your major, like what kind of field you want to go into. And I know people are like. Well, you're still a kid. You shouldn't have to decide what your major is when you're still in high school. Half pe half of people change their major in college as well. Okay, a lot of people are super duper undecided on what they want to do with their life, even after they graduate. Like it's it's insane. I'm sure there's a study on it that I could look up, but I don't really have the time right now. I just want to go back into this. Like it's insane how many people change their major because a lot of people. You're you're in college. You're young. Or I'm in high school. I don't. I, I can't say I've experienced any of it. But I'm sure so many people think they want to do something, and then they find something out about the job that completely changes their point of view on it. They're like, "Oh, I don't think I want to do that anymore." Now this sounds a lot cooler. And then they want they go off and they want to do something else. And then they'll wish they changed their major, or they do change their major. So that argument would indeed be invalid. Boom! Mic drop. Get proved wrong. 
So, where was I going to go? Oh, yeah. Teachers, a long time ago, I say a long time ago, before I was born, maybe like teachers in the 90s, they definitely didn't account for smartphones because they weren't around yet. But, like, smartphones have changed so many of the things that they teach, in, they teach or taught in high school. Uh, <laughs> it's, cra it's absolutely crazy to me. I hate this background noise. Hold on one second. My computer's decided to be a jerk. Okay. You probably didn't hear that because I had my headphones on. Lucky me, huh? But uh, I was getting a pop-up notification. Sorry. Where was I at? Um, I was on teachers, not accounting for things like smartphones. Jesus, go away, pop-up. Now, they didn't account for smartphones. Like, I'm sure so many teachers in the 90s, because I still hear it sometimes, and I'm just like, actually, that's wrong. But like, math teachers in the 90s and the 80s and the 70s, whatever, I'm so certain that they had to say something like, Now, you can't just use a calculator. You're not always going to be walking around with a calculator in your pocket. I have some news for you. Introducing the iPhone with a built-in calculator. And with Google.com. Literally anything you want to know at the tip of your fingers. It's so insane to me, like, how much technology has advanced. Can you imagine... Like, I just want to talk about technology for a minute. How about this? Can you imagine going to someone in, like, Civil War times and explaining to them what a microwave was? You see, uh, you, you put your food in this box. There, a box? Like, like, uh, like a crate? Wood? No, it's not wood. It's, it's made of, uh, like, plastic. And they're like, what, what is plastic? I don't know if they had plastic during Civil War times. They probably did. You'd be like, well, it's this... It's this material that's made from, like, the insides of plants, and it's, like, thicker than paper, but not as thick as wood. They'd be so intrigued by it. And then you have to explain to them, you, you put it in this box, right? The box opens? Yes, yes, but not on the top. It opens on the side. And then they're, they're trying to fathom how the heck a box could open on the side. Well, you're trying to explain that you put stuff in it, and it gets warm. And they're like, what is this witchcraft? Is this magic? And then they'll look at each other, and they'll say, burn the witch! And then the Salem witch trial started with some time traveler trying to explain how a microwave worked. Yeah, basically. You go back in time, you're like, hey, this is a microwave. And then you plug, you pl actually, I, can't, I was going to say you plug it in, but there's nowhere to plug it in at. <laughs> okay, let's say you bring a generator with you. You plug it into the generator. They'd be so fattened by the generator, too. Oh my gosh, you'd have to explain that as well. You'd have to explain, like, what electricity is. Now, I'm leaving Civil War times and going back to, like, Salem Witch Trials times. That would be crazy. Because Civil War is a bit more... It's a bit more, um... Reasonable. To explain these things. Because a lot happened over, like, that 200 years. Because, like, Salem Witch Trials is in, like, the 1600s, I think. But, like... So, let's say it's Salem Witch Trials times. You bring your generator. You plug in the microwave. And you insert their mutton... Or their bread in the microwave. And it comes out warm. And then they burn you for being a witch. They burn you at the stake. And then it goes... And then it causes everyone to become uneasy because I think everyone there around is a witch. Everyone's evil. Everyone's out to get them. The whole Salem Witch Trials thing was really crazy to me. Like, President today talks about things are a witch hunt. Like, a witch hunt is crazy. Like, going after someone with no evidence at all, just calling them a witch and they're done. It's kind of like how... Uh, I really don't want to get political in this podcast because I feel like I'm going to stir a lot of heads, cause a lot of commotion, but no one really listens to this anyway, so I guess I'm just going to say that, like, how, how do, how do I put this? When things happen to someone, say you get accused of something, you're immediately publicly thought as guilty until you're proven innocent, and I hate that because so many things happen to people, and, like, there's so many, like, false rape allegations, oh my gosh, that's so bad, like, I can't remember the player's name, but there was a player from Baylor, he played football a few years ago, and he was projected to be like a top three rounds draft pick. Had a prosperous future in the NFL. Gets a false rape allegation. Doesn't get drafted. Loses all sight of his dream. Later, the rape allegation's proven false. The lady comes out and says, yeah, that didn't happen. She's just chasing a check because, obviously, he wanted to break up or something if they were in a consensual relationship, which they were because it was proven false. Uh, that's, that's just crazy to me how one, one word can ruin someone's life. 
one phrase, one statement can just absolutely slaughter every intent that they have of becoming a good person. Like it. They, people have dreams. People have goals. People have visions, everything. And then they can just be crushed by one person's phrase, speak of the mouth, and then everyone hates them. They're publicly despised. Just like a witch hunt. Like those people probably... A lot of them, I'm not saying, like, all of them are good people, but I doubt they were witches, man. Like, that's ridiculous. That's so bad. They, they really goofed up. I hope that at some point they issued a, a formal public apology for burning people at the stake and drowning them to death. Gosh, that is absolutely horrible. It's horrendous to think that sort of thing happened. It's like a... No, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to leave that. But it's crazy. It's absolutely insane. <laughs> yeah, but half of you are stirring around thinking, what was he going to say? I wonder. But uh, it's not a big deal. It really wasn't. I was going to slip up at the lip and people were going to backlash at me in the comment section. Shout out to like the five or six people who comment on these podcasts and actually listen to them. You are the true MVPs. We're nearing the 26 minute mark. Um, I think we just passed it actually when I said that. But um, kudos to you for listening. You're great. You're great people. I'm not sure exactly where to go next. I'm just going to keep talking about how great you guys are and how your support is just so absolutely amazing for me. I love each and every one of you. Shout out to you. You guys are the true MVP. Speaking of MVP, oh, I got some. I'm about to go into sports. Now, if, if any of you watch the NFL, you will know that at the time of this recording, Lamar Jackson has been eliminated from the playoffs. And Tom Brady has been eliminated from the playoffs by the Tennessee Titans. Wow. That is absolutely crazy. Derrick Henry is a beast. And you can't disagree with that. And if you disagree that Derrick Henry is an absolute monster of a human being and an amazing football player, you can go crawl in a hole and continue not watching the sport for what it really is because that man is absolutely insane. And Ryan Tannehill has become a great quarterback too. But I want to start away from sports kind of. Simple because I know a lot of you don't really watch the NFL and a lot of you don't understand it. But Lamar Jackson was the MVP. He has been outed of the playoffs by Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry and the Tennessee Titans. And so has Tom Brady, um, arguably the greatest quarterback in the NFL's history, has also been outed of the playoffs by the Tennessee Titans, Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry. That is absolutely insane. It's kind of crazy, the uh, the chance things that happen in sports, though. Like, you know, as a Chicago Cubs fan, 2016 was an amazing year because no one expected them to win that. They had a terribly uh, so difficult route to the World Series, and they ended up taking it to Game 7 after being down 3-1, and they ended up winning in extra innings. How picture, how picture perfect is that? That's absolutely insane. What a, what a great year. 2016 was a great year overall. If you ask me anyways, I'm sure some of you won't agree. But like, when I think about music, 2016 was amazing. 2016, what came out? The Life of Pablo by Kanye West, Fire Album. Um, Lil Uzi Vert vs. The World and Love Is Rage 1 both came out that year. Shout out Lil Uzi. Um, I'm trying to think of some great albums from 2016. Here, I'm going to Google it while I'm sitting here. Hold on. Google Best Albums of 2016. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Just so I had some things to talk about, because you know, 2016 to me, it was just such a, such an absolutely picture perfect album, or <laughs> it was a picture perfect year for music. The Life of Pablo came out that year. Like I said, I wasn't so sure about that. Um, Coloring Book by Chance the Rapper came out that year. Blonde by Frank Ocean, that one was great. Um, ba -ba -da. Views by Drake, that one was good. That one was, I mean, it was okay. There have been better ones. Jeffrey by Young Thug. That album cover was absolutely insane. Still Brazy, YG. That one was good. Uh, ba -da -ba. What else do we have here? 50 Best Albums of 2016. I'm going to click on this. It's by Rolling Stone. Therefore, it's good. Don't know that one. Don't know that one. All right, I'm going to toss this aside. You get the idea. 2016 was a great year for music. Not to say that every other year wasn't great for music because music is unpredictable. Great music comes and goes. Um, I'm trying to think of some albums I'm excited for that might be coming out soon. Hmm. Oh, isn't it? Green Day's dropping an album next month. That ought to be interesting. It probably won't be as good as their older stuff because they're old men now. I don't know how old the members of Green Day are, but they're, they're old musicless. 
I think, I mean, a lot of people don't like rock music. I mean, I don't actively listen to new rock music, but Green Day was fire. They've always been fire, in my opinion. But, uh, I didn't listen to Revolution Radio, which is their last album. Dropped in, like, 2016, I think. I actually know that I'm thinking of it, so maybe it's good. <laughs> but, um, I didn't listen to it. But, um, this new album, it's supposed to be pretty good, and I'm sure I will listen to it in its entirety. Because Green Day goes hard. Speaking of Green Day, I remember in like 5th and 6th grade, I was Green Day crazy. It was like all I listened to all the time. And I remember my 6th grade math and science teacher. Because I had two teachers in 6th grade. One would do like English writing and reading. And then the other would do like um, math, science, and social studies. Because that's what they called history back in grade school. They called it social studies. And I don't understand why, like, why can't we just call it history? Because that's what it is. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But, um, yeah, she also loved Green Day. And that teacher was super cool to me because we shared a lot of the similar views. Like, we both watched The Walking Dead. I haven't watched any of the new season of The Walking Dead. I don't know if it's any good or not, but I haven't heard any spoilers, so it must not be that great. But I'm sure I'll get around to watching it because the last season was pretty good. I mean, I I don't want to say it was pretty good. It was okay. I mean, ever since they killed off, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched season 8 or 9 or whatever of The Walking Dead, you might want to click off and skip ahead a little bit, but it hasn't been the same since they killed off Rick. I mean, I really feel like he was the main character, I know they're trying to phase that out and make somebody else the main character, but it's it's just not the same, it really isn't. Everything has changed. Uh, I mean, and it was a good show, like, there was a great, it was a great, um, it was a great show, it really was. And, like, I really did enjoy it a lot. I thought it was great. I thought it was, like, the first, like, Terminus. Oh, my gosh, that was great. I put up a poll on my story. It's Q&A for tonight. And I only have one reply right now, and it's the NFL. And how about them Titans? And I already addressed that. Um, now that the Saints are out of the playoffs, I guess I'm going to stir back towards sports. That way I can rant about the Saints. Because the Saints got out of the playoffs by the, the uh, Minnesota Vikings. Who they lost to in the playoffs two years ago. And everyone ran it about. And it was, gosh, they called it the Minneapolis Miracle. Because they won on like a last second catch as time expired. And everyone thought the Saints were going to win. But they ended up scoring at the last final seconds. And they didn't lose the same way. They ended up going to overtime. And they lost because the Saints played terrible. It was like they didn't want to be out there. Like, I'm not an NFL coach or anything, and I'm not an NFL player. I don't know how the energy is out there. I don't know a lot of that stuff. But I think when you're playing at home like that, and you're clearly the better team, because the Saints were clearly the better NFL team, I think you really have to show out, regardless of how you think you might not have to play hard because they're not that good of a team. That's ridiculous to me. But um, now that the Saints are out of the playoffs, I guess I'm going to root for the Titans, and I'm sure you'll call me a bandwagon for that. But I'm not gonna, you're not gonna see me rocking Titans gear or putting on my story, Titan Up, baby. Anything like that. But I will support them. I will give them the slightest bit of support because they beat Tom Brady, which is very admirable. And they beat Lamar Jackson, the MVP, which is also very admirable. Um, that's, that's quite the feat to accomplish. It really is. Dang, we've, we've talked about a lot of stuff. We talked about class presentations to the human mind to the nfl to something else i didn't forgot everything that we talked about right now but um congrats to you if you're listening we've been listening for over half an hour which will make this easily my longest podcast to date so congratulations to you um shoot i'm running out of things to talk about i got an idea since my q a backfired and no one wanted to respond to it because everyone's a bunch of jerks gosh what a bunch of losers anyways um, I'm going to go to this website. Hold on one second. Random topic generator. You see, won't that be good to talk about something random? Random topic generator. Uh, pick a new subject. 200 plus random topics. Let's see. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, meteorology and pigeons. Do I talk about pigeons or meteorology? I think I'm going to talk about a reoccurring um, conspiracy theory that because if if any of you know me personally which you probably do because a lot of people who follow this channel are people that I just know personally but um if you know me I love a good conspiracy theory 
Yeah, the one about pigeons is very interesting because basically the whole basis for the theory is that no one ever sees a baby pigeon. Now, I'm sure there's pictures or videos on the internet, but most people, I can, I can say most, I can stick by that too. Most people have never seen a baby pigeon. And I, to this day, not in picture, video, or in real life, have never seen a baby pigeon. And basically the whole, like, there's a whole website for this, I think. And it goes in really deep. Like, people do actually believe this, which is crazy to me. Now, I'm not going to go that route because I'm sure those of you who know me are thinking something else because I believe in a crazy conspiracy theory, sort of, which I'll probably talk about later. But, um, <laughs> wow. So basically the theory says that pigeons are spy cameras that the Reagan administration way back forever ago sent out to spy on the American public to see during like the whole Red Scare thing with communism, they're trying to find communists. Which I, th I think that's really interesting actually, especially since they have like a whole date on them because that was like when the huge, uh, when a huge pigeon population boom was. You know, a lot of those people, they say they're all hidden cameras and that, uh, a lot of government organizations produced them, sent them out into the world. And I think that's really weird. And I heard this super crazy, super far-fetched idea that whenever pigeons post up on uh, like on telephone wires, they're recharging their battery. <laughs> I thought that was absolutely hilarious. Like if the government was to do something like that, they'd easily just make them solar powered. Come on, like come on, guys. But then they'd all die during a a hurricane. But no one would question it because it's a hurricane and they're dangerous. And like storms, and when the when the sky goes down, what did I did I just say the sky goes down? When the sun goes down, they'd all die, or they'd have to have their energy stored, and after a while of darkness, they'd all just die out. But I mean, if you think about it, it's it's super out of the question. It really is, but it is possible. Now that's why I like a good conspiracy theory because obviously I don't agree with a lot of them, but they're all possible. Like everything trying to put this into words um like there's not a lot of stuff that's truly impossible to think of like conspir conspiracy theories are just crazy like i keep drawing a blank here i'll just talk about the one that i kind of believed in for a while because it kind of makes sense the whole flat earth debate and all of you are probably going to call me a, a bad names in the comment section because i say that i kind of agree with the flat earth now the flat earth theory has been debunked a lot so I don't completely agree with most parts of it anymore. I simply think of it as an intriguing idea now because I've seen a lot of studies that actually debunk it. But then there's a lot of studies that actually show proof to some degree that the flat earth theory might be correct. And you can go into a whole bunch of studies, but the thing that I found the most interesting was called like the Bedford level experiment, where basically some dudes went all the way down the river. They were on, one dude was on one side of the river with a huge telescope. And the other guy was um, in a boat traveling down the river. And basically the whole thing was if you went two miles of curvature, two miles down the river, the river was like one straight line. So you could see all the way down it. But supposedly two miles of curvature would obstruct the entire view of the boat. But he made it six miles down the road, or down, I say the road, down the river, and he could still see him. He made it like 10 miles, he could still see him. And eventually he just disappeared entirely without kind of dipping down how the uh how it works. And supposedly the whole thing that that came up with was the theory of a vanishing point, kind of like in like um art and basic human eye structure that uh supposedly the human eyes can only register information from so far away, and that there is a vanishing point where everything where you can't take in any more information. And I guess that kind of does sort of make sense to a degree, like. But, like, there's a lot of more experiments that debunk the whole idea that there is curvature, that the Earth isn't flat. And so I don't truly, you can catch me, you can document me here saying this, I don't completely believe in the flat Earth theory anymore. There you go. Go ahead. Take, screen record it, do whatever. So whenever you catch me saying something about flat Earth, you can roast me. Go ahead. But I'm going to try and stick by that statement that I don't completely believe in it anymore. And I think that's reasonable. Because... It makes more sense that science actually is true and that NASA is legit. But, um, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I like conspiracy theories. I, there's a lot of great ones out there. There's, um... Now, don't get me wrong, there are a lot of completely out-of-the-question conspiracy theories, like the Holocaust was fake. It was all staged. Or that the moon landing was fake. Which does make sense to a degree, but there's also a lot of information debunking that as well. Just like, you know, the Holocaust definitely happened. There's a lot of information debunking any other theories with that as well, I'm sure. I don't even have to look it up, I already know. But, <laughs> that's just insane to me, that people truly do dedicate their time and their research to believing those sorts of things. Things that could be completely out of the question. But then again, I guess, most conspiracy theories are completely out of the question. Much like the Flat Earth. Everyone's been taught to believe that the Earth is a globe... There's a globe in your kindergarten classroom the first day you step in there. Since birth, most people have a globe in their house. It's... So, I mean, that side of it does sort of make sense. That people could just instinctively believe that the Earth is a globe, but it's actually a flat. But then I then you ask yourself, what gain does any government have to saying that the Earth is round as opposed to where it's actually flat? Like, what are they to gain from making you believe that? And that's kind of where my trail runs dry, as well as all the information debunking it, and that it kind of really doesn't make sense. Like, it's it's really far-fetched, as most conspiracy theories are, but I do believe a lot of them are super interesting. Like, it's crazy to me how people really do believe those. But then again, I, I guess I'm not really one to talk, because I believe in crazy things as well. So... I guess, in a way, that was hip a bit hypocritical. I'm going to go ahead and nick myself for being a hypocrite. Bop. Okay. You got me. I've done it. I nicked myself. I'm thirsty now. Oh. Uh, I'm going to try and stretch this out to 45 minutes. Let me see if I can get one more good topic in here. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I said meteorology, didn't I? I saw something the other day. It was a conspiracy theory. There we go about meteorology and that the government is controlling the weather using what they call geoengineering chemtrails which is basically like you see a jet fly across the sky and all the exhaust is there yeah supposedly they're releasing some kind of chemical into the atmosphere to control the weather which i thought was really interesting but there's not a whole lot of scientific scientific uh basis behind that at all in any way shape form or fashion now what i did see the other day was a video of the government create of <laughs> I keep saying the government like they're like some kind of common enemy or something. It was somebody creating legitimate clouds, and I just thought that was like the craziest, the most neat thing in the world. They legit sat there and made a cloud and sent it up to the atmosphere, and that kind of that sort of thing really does make me think that it could, in theory, be possible to control the weather. Like, what if? You're in Alabama, which I am, and a lot of you listening to this probably are. What if you live in Alabama and you never see snow? Think about the dollars that the government could make, could charge people, the organizations could charge people to allow them to see snow here in Alabama. Or that the government could make it snow. Or that in regions where it snows all the time, the government could make it stop snowing. And then you're like, oh, global warming. And I'm like, ah, oh, you got me tough that's a big that's a big conspiracy theory too the global warming isn't real which <laughs> i got i gotta say i've partaken in that theory myself but evidence does point towards the globe is heating up so i really don't know and to be honest with a lot of these they're conspiracy theories and all they're great they're neat but i don't really care if it doesn't affect my life one way or the other what do i have to care for about it what reason do I have to acknowledge the existence of these theories and that, you know, I could be living in a simulation. Who cares? I'm enjoying my life as a simulation. It's pretty good. I don't want to take the headset off. I saw a TikTok the other day. It was like, to mess with people, you should go up and like mid-conversation. I'm revealing the secret to you, so if any of you listen to my podcast, you can immediately just go in. You'll know when I do this to you. But it was like the mess of people. And uh, one of them, one of the things they said in it was like, you'll be having like a conversation with somebody, right? And then mid-conversation, you just stop talking and say, 
you turn to like a stone cold expression and say, wake up. And then you continue talking as though nothing ever happened. As though, <laughs> like, you think if, like, if you could pull it off, which a lot of people can't, I know, because I've tried it before and I've never been able to pull it off because I either laugh or they just don't fall for it, which is both of those are a huge possibility. But, um, I ended up giving it away, which is a real shame because that sort of thing does happen sometimes. Dude, I've really been sitting here talking for 45 minutes. I wonder when dinner is. I'm kind of hungry. But that's just crazy to me, the, uh, all those theories that we are living in a simulation, take the headset off, wake up, you're in a coma, what if, what if everything's a dream? Isn't that just crazy to you? Like, to think that you could be sitting here listening to this podcast in your dream, or that I could be sitting here making this podcast for people that aren't even real, just in a dream. That's absolutely insane to me. But all, all those theories are just speculation, they're all so dumb they're inaccurate i don't want to call them dumb or inaccurate because then i might get backlash because all these things are possible while they're unlikely they're possible but who's to go against what's unlikely it wasn't likely that the titans were going to beat the patriots it wasn't likely that the titans were going to beat the ravens it wasn't likely that the vikings were going to beat the saints twice both times in the playoffs it wasn't likely that the refs were going to miss a pass interference call last year against the Saints and the Rams. It wasn't likely that they were going to miss that call, but they did. And it cut the Saints out of a trip to the Super Bowl, which is tough. But who's to go against what's unlikely? It's all statistics. And while there is a small fraction of that it could happen, it could happen. And that's absolutely insane to me. More proof that probability is important to your life because, heck, I couldn't have in-depth conversations like this if it wasn't for probability class. If I didn't know what a fraction was. Fractions are important, like it or not. While they suck and all the math lessons on fraction are terrible, fractions are terrible, they are important. But you know what isn't? The Pythagorean Theorem. It's, it's lame. It's stupid. I don't need it. And that's what I'm going to leave you with. Today, I'm going to gonna start wrapping this up. The Pythagorean Theorem is lame. You're not going to use it once you leave high school or college, unless you're a mathematician. It'll be a very rare occurrence. And even if you do, you'll just whip out your smart... If you don't know it, you'll just whip out your smartphone. And it'll be done just like that. So, you've been with... You've... <laughs> I said whistening. <laughs> okay, you've been listening to Dumb Things I'm Forced to Deal With. I'm your host, Louis Swagoo, wrapping this up. I hope you have a great day, a great night, a great afternoon, whatever time it is where you are. I wish you the best, and I hope you have a great time. And with that, I'm going to leave you. Signing off, Louis Swagoo. See you later.